it is time to visualize our last event that we captured. Cool. Which is, what is it, Nick? Spotted things. Spotted things. Well, who spotted what? Yes. Where the enemy has been spotting the player. Oh, you are. That was a question. <laughs> <laughs> Did it not come across as a question? No, I was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got uh, our click positions, our time positions, and our distance positions all set up. Let's get into looking at where the enemy was at the time when they saw the player mm. so what we want to do for this one is have a, a box or a line of some kind that says the enemy was here mm. uh, and that can be read and then it will draw a line to where the player was at that time and cool. it should be green to say that this like so clearly you can see this side of the line is the enemy and this side of the line is the player cool uh, all right so let's we've already got that set up in our api Let's jump into our code and come up here to, is this the right one? Yes, this is the right one. Um, what am I thinking about? I can't remember. <coughs> you okay there, dude? Yep. No, you've already got one. Okay. Sorry, Nick's just having a little coughing fit. Let's move into the code and we look at, we have the get data player spotted. So we'll jump into this guy and we'll look at the current exception that it's throwing and we'll go hey it's the same pattern we've seen before so we'll copy the by distance and we'll put that into player by spotted and we'll call this what is the endpoint called this one this one it is get player spotted mm. there we go get player spotted uh it is returning int no you can return the void don't know why you're returning an int then it can get player spotted when it says make the web call and are you going to create the right method for me this time no see it changed this one as well that's I really weird don't like it doing that so i'm going to <laughs> call mm. it get player spotted like copy that go to the by distance method because i know i basically want to copy that guy Put that there. So now I've got a duplicate. Get rid of this guy. Put the method name in there. That was a bit weird. I don't know why it's doing that. It's mm -hmm. a bit strange. Um, anyway, so render data get player render data player spotted. And here we're going to call this one player spotted. That's our class. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly copy this. Go to distance and then put it in. This elevator music is not very good. That was elevator music. I'm um, thinking music, waiting music, hold music. Uh, all right, so let's look in this one. What do we need? We've got the level name, the level version. We don't need the whoa. We don't really need the client ID, but we'll keep it there anyway because it comes. We don't need the distant accumulative. We, we need to know the enemy position and the player position so we'll copy player we'll put in enemy enemy position xyz and we also had an enemy name oh yes jeffrey 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 yes i was shaking my fist <laughs> no one can see that unfortunately Radio. so that is our player spotted. If we jump into here, uh, so yeah, so Nick and I jumped into Databricks earlier to just make sure that we had the correct things, mm -hmm. uh, which we did. The counter, player position, X, Y, Z, and in position, and the enemy name. Uh, we don't need my work email open, so let's close that. <laughs> <laughs> and what else do we need? Nothing, that's it. Uh, well, no, that's not it, we're not done. We now need to come to the uh, method. analytics display, going to the get player spotted's web call, and now going to work on the render data player spotted. Again, I don't know why it's doing that renaming thing. I'm scared that's going to happen, so I'm going to go to distance, the existing render data by distance, and I will copy paste the entire method. And then we'll change basically everything inside of it. There we go. You don't need to have the events in there. It's whinging because it's passing events, which is the wrong type. It's not API wrapper player path by distance. It's API wrapper player spotted. That's yep. happy. This is happy. Hooray. Mm. Clear viz, player pathways. We need that one. We need this or do we? Yes. 
Let's say you want to see where the players are walking, and you also want to see where the players are being spotted. Well, that's a good idea. Okay, keep it on. So and let's keep... keep it on. So we'll attach these to a different object, so then we can see if there is something weird going on there. Mm -hmm. um, so you're saying we will clearly um, just clear this, the spotted data, instead of the other data. Yeah, so here we've got display player pathway. The display player pathway will have another one for display player spotted. Okay. In fact, let's just do that. So control D duplicate and then player spotted uh, on our analytics manager where we were putting display player pathway. I think that's what the full variable was called. Yes. Let's go back to analytics display. We've got display player pathway. We'll put display player spotted. Mm -hmm. Display player spotted. 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 Chill out while it does its thinking thing, and then we'll drag player spotted over there. Great. Uh, if we are going, you know, let's keep going. I'm thinking like there's three things we have to do, or a few okay. things we have to do. I'm right. thinking, which ones are we going to do? What order? Oh my do goodness, so much to do. Uh, copy display player spotted, then come back to render data player spotted. We mm -hmm. won't clear viz player pathways, we'll clear viz player spotted. Mm -hmm. That'll whinge at me because we haven't set that up yet. Uh, all of our events are good. Uh, the position of the cube, we're not going to use a cube for this. We're going to use a new prefab, which is a line renderer. Yep. So we don't want to set positions of the cube, we want to set position of our player side of line renderer. Mm. And what's on my, my, um, my clipboard? It was that. So when we are creating the new object, we'll put that onto the display player spotted's transform. This will still need some changing to use a different prefab, which we'll come to in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, the enemy, so this is now going to be called player position because it's the position of the player side of the line yep. renderer. So then we can copy paste this guy and call the next one enemy position. And that comes from the events data point that we're looking at, and we called this one enemy. Whoa. Come on, keyboard or fingers, work with me. Enemy position X, enemy position Y, enemy position Z. Uh, this thing here is currently whinging at me because it's saying the event data point. What's the event position? So we go, let's set it to the player position. No, wait, let's set it to the enemy position. Oh, that's not right either. Uh, so let's move into what is this new game object that we need to create here. So mm -hmm. we're going to call this one P data point. Ooh, this is interesting. This is called P data point. This one should be P data point player. Wait, it's not a point, it's a pathway. Vector data line. Data. Yeah, that's what I mean. So if uh, let's let's come back to this one. So if I'm looking at player path by distance, sorry, I didn't explain that in putty real. I'm looking at player path by distance. It's called p data point. That's fine. Mm. I guess you're right. We don't. I was thinking maybe we should call it p data point player pathway and p data point player spotted. But instead of that, we could just leave it as data point and p player spotted. I'm sort of confused, but okay. I'm going to go with this and it shall make sense, hopefully. <coughs> so this here is our, you're right, this is our existing prefab mm -hmm. for the data point, the one that we've been using. We'll make a new one for player spotted. No. There we go. Oh, I see. What so now mean. we can put a new prefab that is what we need it to be. Yeah. So what is that new prefab that we need it to be? We need to switch over to Unity, which is this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and let's make a, it's whinging at me, why clear this player spotter does not exist. I guess I just have to quickly create this method. La, 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 la. Private void that do nothing. Let's quickly set this one up, it's very fast. So into player pathways, which does what we want it to. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll take this and then we'll come down to the Clear this player spotted, just paste this straight in there, and where we've got display player pathway, we just have to play that, just change that to display player spotted, mm -hmm. and now it'll clear off the spotted positions. Cool. Cool. Into Unity. That should 
give you happy. No, you're still not happy because this is called something. Just go away for a second, would you? I'll get to you. Go on, please. Yes? Hooray! Uh, what do we need to do for this? We need to have a new game object. So we'll create an empty game object. And on this, we'll create a line renderer. So this is going to say, I can draw a line from one position to the other position. You just tell me what they are. Mm. And you go, how thick should the line be? Uh, oh, so if 40. we... Sorry? 40. 40 is pretty freaking huge if from here to here is 1. Here to here is 10 units. 40. You want 40 units. 40. All right, I'll go 40. Yeah. Can I do it as a smaller number first? Like just 2? You want straight 40. 40. Nick wants 40. Oh, it's there we go. Big. <laughs> that's the width. Oh, right, so it if, <laughs> if we look at the positions here, it's going from zero 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 to zero zero one. And if we move that, now we've <laughs> got what's happening. So if we move the X position to the side, it'll rotate itself around to look somewhere else. That's cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, create a prefab out of this. We'll apply a different color set to it here under the color part. We'll say the first position should be the player, so it can be full on green, bro. Yep. The other one should be red. And in the middle, we'll put a yellow. So you can put a yellow if you want. You don't really need one. But hey, there's our um, oh, scary dry blood. There we go. Cool. So we've got green, yellow, red. <coughs> so this becomes applied onto this. But this needs a, uh, the line renderer still needs a material to put that onto. So we can create a new material and we'll call this one Matt Player Spotted. Matt, 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 Material. Matt Analytics Player Spotted. Sorry, just trying to keep them grouped ish. Uh, for this one, we need it to be a different type. We can't use the standard one. We need it to be a particle. So we'll take a particle and we'll say uh, alpha blend. Oh, I'm already on it. Alpha blend. Why a particle? Um, because particles will then try and face the camera. Oh. oh okay. So cool. you see how this is the moment just this flat thing in the world. If mm. we run the scene view, yep. whoa, it's trying to do something weird there. Anyway, it's trying to always face mm. the camera. That's because we can get because it is of type that we want it to be a particle so we can then use the correct render over the top of it. I'm not explaining that very well. Uh, I hope you will just see it in action if that's cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. Awesome. All right, so let's pick the thingamajig, um, the line renderer, and we'll give it a better name. Line renderer. P line renderer. So it's going to be a prefab. I'm going to call it the line renderer. Uh, and then we'll apply the analytics player spotted material onto this. And now we can see there's our green to red. Where's the yellow? There is no yellow. I guess we don't really need the yellow point. What if we said wait, blue? Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Maybe, oh, hang on. That's because it goes off the points. No, 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 no. <coughs> maybe it goes off this three. Ah! No, just this three. You somewhere. Whoa. Oh, cool. Whoa. We can make some funky shapes. It's there. It's there, all right. It's just mm. not really needed because there's not enough space. Mm. Um, Let's maybe not make the width 40. Yes! Thank you, Nick, too. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say two. <laughs> uh, there it is. So it's that big now. It's much smaller. And you go, wait, yeah. hang on. It's kind of cutting itself off. Like one would be enough, right? But it's going to go, we're not taking into account the Y position at all. Uh, the height away mm. from the ground, so it's always going to be a little bit cut off in half. We could adjust that by just adjusting our position to make it higher. Mm. But anyway, we don't need this to be three, we only want it to be two elements long. Um, so essentially, we've got this prefab now, we can just uh, instantiate this, assign it as a child of player spotted, and then set the position of these two elements, and now we'll be able to see where the player was and where the enemy was for every mm. single spotted event. So let's take the P, line renderer, I'm um, just double checking have I missed anything here. Two world space, that you've got camera motion, you're seeing everything looks pretty good. Uh, let's go to prefabs and we've got P line renderer. 
looking at my horrible, horrible naming convention where I just don't name and convention anything. Um, and I'm going to just continue on my merry way. Mm -hmm. We've got the P player spotted. This is where I was doing the P. Whoops. Ming Nong. There, so now we've got this line renderer object, mm -hmm. which is referencing this prefab. So if we instantiate it, it'll know which object it should create. We can come back into 3D Buzz Analytics and do what? We want to position this thing. So we've got the player position and the enemy position based on the event. Yep. We can now instantiate from P player spotted. Uh, instead of using so instantiate just returns you a game object. Right. We can adjust that to, well, it's always gonna get it for you, but we know that we wanna adjust the line renderer afterwards. So instead mm -hmm. of going event, <coughs> instead of going event data point dot get component line renderer, we can take this dot get component part and put it at the end of our instantiate. Okay. And then that means that this is now a renderer. So this is going to get us the line renderer of the object that has just been instantiated. We're just shorting it down to two. Okay. To, uh, to one line. Now that we've got that, we can say event data point, which is actually event player spotted. Event player spotted. Um, dot set positions and inside of this it says well what do you want me to do what how many vector threes have you got so we say we've got two vector threes so we can say new vector three uh, it's an array and then we'll just pass in the two positions that we have so in this case we have player position mm -hmm. and enemy position whoa enemy position nice so there's our player position there's oh, our enemy position actually, there's that and then we just go hey it's a vector three array pass it in however many we need um and then do we need to set the material no we don't need to touch the material at all for this one because it's already set on the actual line renderer itself because it's always going to be red and green Andy. All right, so that Do is it. everything that we need from this i'm pretty sure let's just run it and if it breaks then we'll troubleshoot uh, you're not needed. This one who is already here, please go away. No, no, no. The object. Delete the object. It's clinging to life. But it's digital. What? 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 Uh, do we sell the key press? I believe it was S for seen or oh. spotted. There we go. Um, something's not right here because it says the enemy was always at zero, zero, zero when the player was spotted. We can see where the player was at all these points, like. Player was there, the player was there, the player was there. How did we get... How did we get spotted down here? Magic. When we were moving, testing things out at the very beginning. Um, when we were moving the enemy into position. Oh, true, ourselves. Yeah. Um, but, what I'm concerned about here is where is our enemy position here? The enemy was not at zero. Are we stuffing this up? It needs to be the other way around. No, I think it's actually the data that we're returning. We checked the API was not returning zero for our enemy positions. Mm -hmm. So let's check the API and see what it's actually getting back. Let's go to up to the very top. I really wish my control M, control O worked while recording, but it doesn't. All right, so key code S, get data player spotted. Let's go into that. Let's check out this URL and we'll see what data we're getting back. Uh, get player spotted, blah, blah, blah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <coughs> like the Simpsons. Well, 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 well. I don't remember that. Ah. I am the disappoint. Full URL. Let's take that full URL. Grab it. Come into oh. this. What do you call it? The URL. The URL. <laughs> Get player spotted. Ah, hang on. Yeah, get player spotted. It's player position X, Y, Z, and X, Y, Z. Do we really not put that on the your in the API? Mm. Really? Let's check it out. Game analytics API, get player spot. Oh, we're getting all of these things and we're passing it player path by time. 
Who we have to do read a play? <sighs> Player spotted. <laughs> I really want it working this video. We'll fix that in the next video. In this one, I'm going to. We're just gonna spin this up, get it running locally, and point and change the and API. We'll the API yeah, okay. Is that okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. E is for embarrassed. <laughs> That'd be me. Oh well. Right now. All right. That's quite funny. Though. I'm putting home on everything. We don't need home, do we? Oh no, we don't. Home controller. Fire. No, nope, maybe, maybe we do maybe need home. <laughs> <laughs> we had this discussion, didn't we? I feel like we did. <laughs> go go there gadget. Go. There's some data. All right, that's so done. that's the real data. I'm yeah. gonna take this dude. This the uh the your the the main the mm -hmm. domain of this. This is the great thing about uh, how this is all set up. So easy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Go to Unity, stop playing, go to Analytics Manager, change this whole thing to that. Uh, and do we I don't think we need a HTTP, but we do. But yeah. Right. It wasn't in there already, so oh that part at the end at the start. Yes. S. Yeah. Yay! Oh. So we can see where the enemy was every time the player got spotted. So we can see the enemy spots us as it comes around the wall. Oh. When it wasn't set up, it could see through walls originally. And yep. then where we've jumped into the corner of it. And now we can also see over here That's when we had cool. a really big thing at the start. Awesome. Um, yeah, so... That that's pretty, will... That's pretty sweet. I think it's pretty sweet. So um, let's quickly do one more thing in this video. Which is if we set up the analytics to show where the player was over distance and where the player was over spotted, we can see the story here. Uh, if you go left, then you'll get spotted, and if you go to the right, there is less chance of you being spotted. So, uh, the other cool thing about this one doing it all in game is you go, I wonder who's coming in behind the wall here. You can switch to the scene view and then actually just move around the whole scene and see what's going on. That's cool. So the game view is what the player sees. If your player, if you had a way of moving the camera in the game, then go for that one. But at least this allows you to check out the whole field mm. and see things from a different angle. For instance, we got spotted behind the wall, mm. and I couldn't see that in the game view because it's behind the wall. Um, That's yeah, very cool. So it's pretty cool. So what we'll do in the next one? Well, let's do two more things. One more in the next video is we'll redeploy that API. Uh, okay. Because we need to fix the player spotted so we can read it from AWS. Yep. And then I figure that we might do a full end-to-end -end test just to demonstrate this whole thing. We'll make a new level, uh, and then we'll capture some data, and then we'll push that data up to where well, it's already going to AWS, and then we'll run the data bricks and we'll get it into RDS, and cool. we'll just test the full end-to-end -end flow that we can make a new level, uh, capture data, and then get it showing in our game. Sounds cool. Awesome. Yep. Let's get going. Cool.